Hello everyone, hope you're doing great. Welcome to Leo's Tech Channel. If you're new here, welcome and I'm so happy to see you all once again. Today, I'm going to talk about the CK Moore computer. It's a very, very interesting topic. I need you guys to watch this video to the end. I'm sure it is a very, very interesting topic. Let's dive into this topic with more detail. What is Sycamore computer? Google's new quantum computer is called the Sycamore 2.0 and it was announced in July 2023. It has 20 operational qubits, which is significant increase from the 53 qubits of the original Sycamore predecessor. This means that Sycamore 2.0, approximately 241 million more powerful than the predecessor. The Sycamore 2.0 is a still prototype, but it is a significant step toward in the development of the quantum computer. It is the first quantum computer to achieve quantum supremacies, which means that it can perform calculation that would be impossible with the classic computer. The Sycamore 2.0 is, is still not powerful enough for the practical application, but it is a major milestone in the development of the quantum computing. As the quantum computers continue to improve, they have the potential to revolutionize many different fields, including cryptography, drug discovery, and artificial intelligence. And to the natural, if we discuss about the quantum computer and traditional computer, or uh, let's say uh, the basic computer that we have, or we can say the classic computer that we have. So into the natural, beyond that, it's the bottom line. It is very challenge for me to explain the entire details of classic computer, which kind of language they're using and the quantum computer. But I do have some very, very fundamental example that I can share with all of you. The traditional computer is using binary digital, which is called zero and one. Let's say I have a coin. If I toss the coin, if I toss the coin, other hits or tails. So what does it mean? Other zero or one. So our traditional computer, most of the time use zero and one. Let's say our heads is uh, zero and the tails is one. So our traditional computer is zero and one, but not both at the time. I need your attention. Our traditional or classic computer use either A or B, but not both at the time. But now let's talk about the quantum computer into the nutshell. So let's say you have to spin you have to spin the coin but it never get to the zero and one if you spin a coin this is the quantum computer so this condition this condition is quantum computer quantum computer so the question is what i get through this experiment through this experiment let's say the traditional computer was either zero or one but not both quantum computer either zero or one or both so i need your attention so quantum computer will accept either one b or both or we can say either a or b or both but with a classic computer either a or b but not both at the same time uh, this is the very simple ways that we can distinguish between classic computer and quantum computer. Since the professor discussed about what makes difference between quantum computer and traditional computer, there are some other factors that I can share with all of you. The main difference between classic computer and quantum computer is how they operate and process the information. Classic computer use bits which can be either zero or one. Quantum computer use qubit which can be both zero and one at the same time. The property of the quantum computer known as a superposition allow quantum computer to perform calculation that are impossible for classic computer. Another difference between classic computer and quantum computer is the way that they operate. Classic computer operate in the linear fashion, means that they perform one operation at the time. Quantum computers operate in the non-linear fashion means that they can perform multiple operations at the same 
time. This property of the quantum computer known as entanglement allowed them to solve problems that would be almost impossible for a classic computer. A quantum computer could be factor 2048 bits number in the few minutes, with the classic computer would take about a billion of years to do the same calculation. This is because quantum computer can take advantage of the properties of the superposition and entanglement to perform calculation that would be almost impossible for classic computer. As a quantum computer continue to develop, their speed advantage is expected to grow. Eventually, quantum computer may be able to solve problems that are almost impossible to complete it through the classic computer. Probably one of the questions that really rack in your brain is how we can access the quantum computer on the future. The same professor will share his prediction how we can use the quantum computer on the future. Okay guys, if you think that this information was very informative, the only way to appreciate my work is to subscribe and like the video. Until next time, I say safe, be brave, and of course, see you guys next time. Uh, okay, here are some of the predictions that I have about the future of quantum computer. The first one is so far what I noticed that um, if you remember a story, if you remember a book by the name of Outliers, a story of success, probably you may find out that how the most software engineer become good at their programming was that back in a time we had a supercomputer. The let's say the personal computer was not available publicly. So what the people would do at that time, let's say including uh, Bill Gates, when he built an application or a software. He was making an appointment for the test lab to test its own project. Possibly, we will have the same thing, but right now, what I'm guessing is that which is going on right now is a quantum computer will be available remotely. So I didn't think so if there is a chance for you to go and test some of the project that you have about the quantum computer. This is my first prediction. The second prediction will be a test lab. So let's say that you're a scientist, let's say that you're a researcher, let's say that you're a developer, let's say that you're a software engineer, but you want to run those kind of algorithm or software to the quantum computer. Probably in the future, there will be a test lab where you can go and set up an appointment and run your application and see the result. And the prediction that I have, uh, the third prediction that I have about the quantum computer is that how about science fiction? Some of the scientists, they say that I don't want to run or I don't trust anyone, even though the public, let's say the public quantum computer lab, I want to have my own quantum computer. That is another question from the scientists and researchers. I get that. So my prediction about those kind of people, there will be a chance that you can find a mini quantum computer on the future, let's say kind of tower top, desktop, but not to the laptop level, not gonna be that much flat, but that's gonna be just desktop or tower top. I can say mini quantum computer on the future. And uh, last but not least so far that I am predicting about the quantum computer, there will be a console, let's say kind of router, a kind of firewall, a kind of uh, a box where you can connect your traditional computer and access the quantum computer very secure. And you may need to go for subscription to open a console or throughput, or we can say a open a terminal for your testing purpose. These are my prediction about the quantum computer.